In 2019, China's People's Liberation Army introduced their brand new primary rifle, the QBZ-191. The reason they switched away from the Type 95 takes us through Xi Jinping's larger goal of modernizing and completely overhauling their entire infantry philosophy. For instance, the QBZ-191 appeared just four months before China announced they would also start manufacturing 1.4 million body armor plates. That probably doesn't sound like a big deal, until you realize in the past, PLA soldiers were never issued ballistic plates. Xi Jinping's sword just got a little sharper and his shield a little thicker. The lightweight 6.6 pound QBZ-191 fires a new version of their 5.8 by 42 millimeter intermediate cartridge at a rate of fire of 750 rounds per minute, using a more reliable gas operated short stroke piston. But don't get distracted by that beautiful hardware. That isn't the real revolution here. We'll see, this is really all about the four new high-tech attachments and changes to their fighting doctrine. But are all these internet rumors that the QBZ-191 has poor performance actually true? And will Xi Jinping's overhaul of the average infantryman really work? Fire off a surplus Narenko round at the like and subscribe button and let's get started. I had just retired from my life as a goat gun hitman with my trusty dog, Doug. Whoa, but some gangsters wouldn't let that happen. Get that dang cappy wick. Fortunately, I kept extra goat guns on display on my coffee table. Quick, get away with his dog. You can collect and display these hefty little suckers that weigh between six and 16 ounces. They make the perfect gift for Father's Day. I also kept some spares on my shelf. And you can make sure your home is stocked with mini diecast metal replica goat guns too by clicking the link in the description or the pinned comment below. They have all kinds of attachments and modifications like scopes and grenade launchers. If they try to steal you again, we'll do this four more times and the movies will be pretty good actually. The QBZ-191 was designed by China's state-controlled Norenko Defense Company inside their mysterious 208 Research Institute in Beijing. This is basically like the equivalent of the US military's Picatinny Arsenal, except it's not located in New Jersey. China's old Type 95 costs about $450 each, and while we don't know the exact cost of this new rifle, similar designs in the West go for about twice that. What we're seeing is a change to quality over quantity. Wang Ying Song, director of the weapons development there, said more importantly, these new firearms are only one component of a broader set of improvements to the PLA's individual soldier equipment. The integrated soldier combat system from Norinco is composed of a weapon, information system, and protection system. Basically, every single military in the world has their own version of this system or program, right? It's like the US military's future warrior program, adding GPS navigation, body armor, and scopes. Russia's program is called Ratnik, which goes to show how falling short at this goal can lead to some pretty rough combat results. I think there are two main things holding the Chinese military back today, and the QBZ is at the heart of addressing these problems. The first is a lack of investment into their soldier equipment and personal protection, and the second is the lack of experience in soldier organization. You could lump both of these problems into what I would call the average infantryman problem. It's an issue facing many ground forces around the world today. What is the average infantryman problem? You see it clearly in the Russian army where few soldiers have optics on their rifles, a total lack of body armor, and complete lack of night vision goggle systems, and overall poor unit cohesion. You can't take and hold territory without your grunts, and at the same time, they're often the very last consideration in a military's modernization program. For instance, the cost of equipping an average Chinese soldier in 2014 was just 9,400 yuan. That's so little yuan, barely any yuan. It's the equivalent of 1,500 USD. And half of that cost is just for the rifle alone. For context, at the same time, it costs 17,500 to equip a US soldier. So at the same time, Beijing was increasing military spending by 12% to 131 billion dollars, but all that money needed to be prioritized, and they chose to send it straight to the construction of long-range missiles and two aircraft carriers costing $9 billion instead. This was done to deter American naval ships in the South China Sea, but it's at the expense of your average soldier. Now fast forward to 2023, and defense spending in China has skyrocketed by 60%. 
That's more than double if my maths check out. What that means is there's plenty of extra yawn to go around to finally address the average soldier's abysmal lack of decent weapons and equipment. But what Ying Song is really talking about here is how important everything is that can easily connect to the QBZ-191's new Picatinny rail system. That's not the weapon itself. All the peripherals, like their new rail-mounted 3X optic called the QMK-152, which makes use of light-gathering fiber optic technology and greatly increases a soldier's accuracy. Here is an alleged view down the sights of the optic taken by a PLA soldier himself. Why couldn't the new optic function well on the old weapon? Well, China's old Type 95 had an annoying built-in carrying handle and no rail system to speak of. Any optic mounted on the old rifle, the Type 95, sat six inches above the barrel, creating accuracy problems, especially when switching to firing up close range at about 25 meters. It sits way too high up on that high horse. But how many soldiers actually have the attachment so far? Likely not many. It was on June 26, 2022, that the People's Liberation Army blog confirmed a single Red Army regular regiment in the Zhejiang military region had installed the QMK-191 optics on their weapons that have a variable zoom from 3x to 8.6x. And according to the unit, it allowed them to hit targets 800 meters away. Now, all the best open source intelligence indicates the QBZ-191 rifle will have a maximum range of between 400 and 800 meters. That's a big discrepancy there though, right? So the China DBP-10 ammo is stated to have a circular error of hit probability of within 5.5 inches at 800 meters. This is probably on the longer 21 inch heavy free floated barrel variant, I'm guessing. This is the method of accuracy calculation used in the Chinese military. It's different than the United States. It basically means that at 600 meters, 50% of your shots will be within five inches. But based on the fact that China's 5.8 round is heavier than the American 5.56, I really doubt that they're hitting targets 800 meters out with this rifle. They will officially name the QBZ-191 the Type 20. Zhang Lu is a spokesperson for the rifle's manufacturer. And he said at the air show that the reason it's called the Type 20 is because it aligns with their whole new suite of next generation technology, like the new J-20 stealth jet and the Z-20 helicopter. So this is the PLA's way of saying, we already invested in next generation aircraft, now we're investing in next generation infantry. Zhang Lu claims the biggest technological breakthrough here is quote, for instance, if the old rifles can fire mostly 5,000 or 10,000 bullets, the Type 20 series can now make it double. 20,000 round life for a weapon is twice what the American M4 is rated for, and probably closer to what the new XM7 has. For all this talk of this being a high performance next generation rifle, there are some weapon experts who claim new video footage of the rifle hints at its poor accuracy and performance. You can see in this video released by China, the bullet holes in the paper target fired from about 25 meters away are keyhole shaped, meaning they're not a small circle puncture like it's supposed to be. This is indicative of a bullet that has an unstable flight path. It's basically tumbling in midair and hitting the target kind of sideways. The reason for this could be that the twist rate in the barrel is no bueno. Basically, this makes the rounds ineffective against body armor because the tip of the bullet isn't hitting the target the side is. But also, I did find this video in a subreddit called F the CCP, so I don't know, full disclosure. And to that point, there are some experts that claim that the rounds these PLA soldiers were firing might have been a special training munition or rubber round to make sure that it was safe for the indoor training, which could explain the key hauling and its performance when firing standard ammo might actually be good to go. Personally, I think it's the latter, but it's hard to throw money at the second problem that China's infantry is facing. The PLA infantry has only had 30 years of experience with a rank structure. Uh, what? Yes, this is because in 1965, Mao Zedong, Chairman Mao, abolished ranks in the Cultural Revolution. Sounds nice, right? Why should my squad leader tell me what to do? That's a capitalist way of thinking. Ranks were abolished in the Chinese military to better align with their communist ideology of everyone being equal regardless of your skills or individual merit. While with the PLA, we came in for many surprises. I never saw a soldier salute an officer. Officers wear no insignia. There's a saying in the army, officers teach soldiers, soldiers teach officers. Abolishing rank was a massive failure and led to terrible results in China's invasion of Vietnam in 1979. Ranks were only then reinstated in 1988. 
We worry in the West about whether or not woke politics are ruining our military's capability to fight. And while I think a lot of that is obviously overblown, this is the single greatest piece of evidence that it is indeed possible to ruin your fighting capability by introducing too much politics into your armed forces. All of this is to say, I think the recent changes to the PLA infantry in trying to issue this new weapon, new camouflage, new rank system, basically now they're putting what actually works ahead of ideology. There's an interesting bit of technology on the QBZ-191 that's helping units with this command and control problem. It's the IR site. Here we spotted the R-5118 IR site, which is considered to be a more revolutionary development than the new rifle itself. But it's made for this weapon. The QBZ-191 is simply like the burrito holding the delicious new meaty optics ready for you to just take a big bite at it. According to the promo video, it has 2X and 4X capabilities as well as 1280 by 720 color HD resolution. The R5118 IR site also claims to be able to communicate via a Wi-Fi signal phone network that can communicate to your commanders and even send live video from your weapon. Even the forward grip on the QBZ-191 is an integral part of the command and control. You can see the grip has buttons that presumably control the heads-up display inside of an optic or radio system, an ability that would be impossible or difficult to integrate on the Type 95 platform. So what do we know about China's design philosophy? How has that improved? The US Army's Foreign Military Studies Office uncovered and translated rare interviews from the design leadership at Norinco. The deputy chief in charge of Norinco's 208 Institute, He Long said, in the past, whatever we developed for the People's Liberation Army, they would be forced to accept. But a major change in the way we developed the QBZ-191 is we worked together in cooperation with the actual average Chinese infantryman to develop the new weapons requirements. Now that's fascinating for two reasons. First of all, it's incredibly rare to get quotes from inside Norinco's leadership about their new equipment. You just rarely see it. Second, this mirrors almost exactly the change in design philosophy that the US Army program managers for the new NGSW XM7 program talk about. A quote from the US Army about their primary weapon development states, we relied heavily on user feedback to create a soldier-centric design that also meets the performance requirements and executed over 20,000 hours of soldier testing. The team conducted soldier touch points with the XM7 rifles. Show me on the soldier touch points where you were touched. So China's copying the US Army's biggest change to how they develop weapons, which is instead of pushing designs from the top down, they're listening to the guys who are gonna actually be pulling the triggers. But how many PLA soldiers have been issued the QBZ-191 rifle itself since it was first seen four years ago? Most units still appear to be training with the Type 95 old rifle. There have been some occasional appearances in a marine unit here and a promotional training videos there, but it's tough to tell how widespread the rifle is yet. I'm not just pulling this out of my booty. This information about China's lack of equipment is coming straight from the Chinese Communist Party's state-run newspaper called the Southern Weekly. Although if you try to view the article today, you'll be met with an error 404. Nothing to see here, move along, comrade. Luckily, the Wall Street Journal pulled some quotes before the article was hit with a social credit takedown. An anonymous PLA infantry commander said, quote, Bulletproof vests? I don't know if the unit has such gear. I can hear it already. Commander, please report to your nearest political commissar for re-education. The average infantryman problem is the fact that the Chinese soldiers do not have any body armor, they had zero night vision equipment, and two radios per company. One is given to the commanding officer, and the other is given to the political commissar. A major part of the PLA's modernization efforts is to reduce manpower and reduce equipment levels. Xi Jinping, since 2015, has been slowly reducing their army size by cutting it in half. 300,000 soldiers are being released. This might sound counterintuitive, right? Why is the PLA getting smaller and shedding more equipment to become more powerful? Quality over quantity, that's what the QBZ-191 is all about. Wang Ying Song of Norinco talked about how they're speeding up the higher quality production by using new digital design tools that have significantly decreased their research and development times. They were able to compress various stages of design down from a year to just one month. This allowed Chinese weapons engineers to move faster from conceptualizing straight to prototyping phase much faster. Ying Song goes on to say that they used digital simulation labs to fabricate a prototype. Wai Dongs, a Chinese-based military analyst in Beijing, stated the following, The individual soldier combat system can greatly increase the battlefield situational awareness of a soldier by sharing information, so the battlefield will become more transparent to them as they recognize danger and more accurately attack targets, gaining a significant advantage. 
But how does the average PLA grunt feel about the new gun? Foreign Military Studies Office OE Watch article found and translated a quote from a regular PLA soldier named Li Zhang. The rifle is highly reliable and comfortable to operate, shoots with very high accuracy, and has less recoil. You know, when I hear that, I wish that there was an average Chinese soldier on YouTube that I could connect with so I could better understand their point of view. So the QBZ-191 has no export version into the United States, or any other nation for that matter. Although this might have just recently changed that IDX 2023, also known as the best defense industry gathering for the Middle East, China Jing and Import and Export Corporation made an appearance there. This is the legal arms dealer for overseas deliveries from Norinco's arsenal of weapons, and they claim to have an export version of the QBZ-191 now, which could mean China is planning to sell their rifle to foreign armies around the world, a great way to increase influence and get a foot in the door to send military trainers to African and Middle Eastern nations. As it stands today, if China were to invade Taiwan, they'd likely, I think, face a similar problem to what we've seen with Russia's invasion, because they have not fully solved the average infantryman problem. But they've taken their first steps and they seem to be headed in the right direction. If you like this video, I think you'll really dig this one about how combat conditions on the ground change the conditions for peace talks in the Ukraine war. I'm Chris Cappy, ending transmission on this net, time now.